Hello my darlings, today we're doing another Genshin Impact story, this one featuring Zhao. Zhao is the new character in the uh, non-permanent banner and uh, good luck pulling for him. I think I skip him, I'm waiting for Hu Tao. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the story. Please remember to like or dislike, comment something below. If you're new here and think I'm worth it, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. But uh, most importantly, watch the video until the end and comment something down below. That is the best way you can support me outside of going to my Patreon because this will enhance my standing in the algorithm. Okay, let's get right into it. Zhao, the mighty illuminated Adepti, guardian of Liwe, and heralded as the guardian Yaksha. There had been many stories told about him and from him, like his reserved personality, but there were also many unsung tales, and you just so happened to find yourself be a part of them. You had been born to the family of a rich merchant, the high society of Lewe always at your fingertips. That was until you accompanied a caravan to Mondstadt. It hadn't been your first travel, and you knew the dangers. But an ambush by Hillichurls had been the last thing you'd expected, mostly because these wildlings kept to the plains and forests. They were led by an abyss mage, but luck was on your side. Zhao saved you. Shaken by your experience, he had taken you to a campfire, and despite his awkwardness, tried to comfort you. You had known it then. But something you said awoke a desire in him. Something human. Something he'd thought he'd successfully shed. But the moment you fell asleep against his warm chest, his humanity became almost touchable. He had closed his eyes and embraced you. After this, you two weren't really dating. It was more dry. He would occasionally visit you just to chat. Or, as he put it, wishing to uphold the contract to support the people of Lewe. But it was obvious to the other Adepti something had changed in him. Luckily for him, it didn't influence his decision-making or hinder his determination. So they ignored it. As to not embarrass him and maybe themselves. Tonight, however, was a seemingly special night. As per usual, Zhao had come for the open window. It was like a secret invitation. A half-open window meant, it's too hot and I need some air. Closed meant that you were probably naked. And open, come in. With his usual deadpan expression, he stood in front of you. Just checking if you're still alive. Then he tilted his head. And why are you wearing that? You blushed. You're wearing a pink kimono. I was wondering, you asked while playing with a strand of your hair, if maybe you'd like to walk with me a bit. And intentionally, his eyes began to widen, and you looked to the side. I mean, why not? He said. Smiling happily, you reached out a hand for him to take. Not understanding the gesture, he looked at you questioningly. Just take my hand, silly. You said softly. And he felt heat rise to his face. Why am I blushing? He wondered. I cannot be sick. After a moment of awkward silence, he finally took your hand. Your hand was soft 
and gentler. Like a delicate porcelain doll, he swallowed a clump in his throat, but didn't say anything. You let him outside after grabbing your paper umbrella. Slowly, the two of you walk the streets of Lewis Night Market. There were quite a lot of people, but not enough for him to become anxious. While not any goal in mind, you two had paused at a food stand, selling delicious smelling fish snacks. Of course, Zhao passed on it, but you didn't mind. You knew the Adeptus didn't eat many, as he put it, mortal foods. While you were happily chewing on some grilled tiger fish, you took the lead towards a more secluded area. Both of you sitting down on a stone bench, surrounded by soft grass that gently bent in the warm summer breeze. It seemed like Barbados himself was trying to make this evening as beautiful and romantic as possible. After finishing your snack, you leaned in closer to him, placing your head upon his shoulder. His hand still in yours, he rubbed gentle circles into your palm. This is new to me, he whispered, barely audible. What do you mean? came your soft-spoken answer. This feeling towards you. He looked up at the moon, his yellow jade eyes twinkling in the stars. Do you love me? He said bluntly. He blinked. Oh, so that is the feeling. You smiled happily. Uh, so, what now? He asked clueless about what to do next. Your smile turned into a grin that would put Hu Tao to shame. We can start by choosing pet names for each other, you suggested. Zhao gave you a confused look. Pet names? Like a dog? You blinked in bewilderment. No, not like a dog. You paused and thought for a moment. You know, like, call me Teddy Bear, you said energetically. Isn't that a bit too long? You sighed. Right, but it was just an example. Hmm. He pondered for a moment. What about baby? You chuckled and almost mockingly asked, <laughs> How come? Babies are cute and innocent. He paused and forcefully looked away from you. You know, like you. A giggle escaped you. <laughs> no, not really. I don't think it fits me. You let your other hand slide down his arm. How about I call you puppy? You said. And he furrowed his brows in response. Didn't you say... Not like a dog. A hiccup escaped your throat, as you barely contained bursting out into laughter. Is something wrong? He asked of concern. No, no, you're, you're cute. Okay, so no puppy. Got it. Then he shrugged. Can it be related to us? He looked back up into his eyes. Like what? I have the power of animal, so I could be a breeze? It sounded more confused than an actual question. He was probably still working through this whole pet name thing. Yeah, Depp, I really should come down your mountains more often. He looked down at his feet. This would be highly difficult. Xiao? You said playfully. Yes. 
We're drifting off the topic. <laughs> you do that a lot when you have no idea what to say. Did you ever notice that? You teased. And he scoffed in response. I like the idea, though. Relating our pet names to our visions. With a nostalgic feeling, you pulled your own out of your pocket. It was a Geo one. It had one day just appeared in the palm of your hand while you slept. You had placed a small gem into the casing of a pocket watch and carried it around on a keychain. You almost felt naked without it. You smiled. You're my little summer breeze. It wasn't really a suggestion, you honestly just wanted to be romantic and see how he'd react. But when his grip around your hand tightened a little, your smile turned devious. Oh, you like that? He made an undescript noise. Are <laughs> all oh, adept at this cute when confronted with new emotions? He humphed and for a moment refused to talk to you. My turn, you said. There aren't any cute rock things, he said. Go on. You really wanted to hear his dumb suggestions. Well, boulder sounds like an insult. Rock too awkward, and sand is too rough, coarse, and it gets everywhere. You nudged his shoulder. Isn't there one more rock synonym? He blinked, raking his brain on what you might mean. After you dozed off for a minute, just to be awoken by a small cricket chirping next to you, you broke the silence, still slightly dazed from sleep. Pebble, you dork. He blinked. Pebble, he repeated. Yeah. I can work with that. You grinned. <laughs> Fine then. <laughs> I love you, my little summer breeze. Joe smiled softly and responded. And I love you too, my uh, pebble. <laughs>